Today's applications go far beyond simply deploying a virtual machine or a container. To run successfully in production, apps need more than just a place to run. They need access to a broad set of services like load balancers, persistent storage, container registries, logging, monitoring, or service mesh solutions. This means that building a true cloud platform isn't just about compute. It's about creating a full ecosystem that integrates both infrastructure and cloud-native services. VMware Cloud Foundation delivers this platform, enabling apps to consume all the services they need consistently across private cloud environments. To see this in action, we're going to deploy a hybrid 3-tier application consisting of a MySQL database running in a virtual machine. We'll use a secret store to securely store the database connection details, deploy a Kubernetes cluster, followed by a containerized backend service with injected secret, and lastly, a frontend service providing a web interface which we are going to use to connect to the application. To start the deployment, I have logged into VCF portal where I can see projects and namespaces I have been assigned to. I'm going to start with deployment of the MySQL database in a virtual machine. I'm going to give the virtual machine a name and select the availability zone. Next, I'm going to select the VM image I want to use as a base for my deployment, which is coming from a curated list provided by the infrastructure admins. To configure the virtual machine with required hardware resources, I'm going to select a t-shirt style sizing in a form of VM class. This list is again controlled by admins who can choose from 16 VM classes that are created out of the box or create their own ones to fit their infrastructure needs. I can create persistent volumes and load balancers on demand directly from this flow. I'm going to create a load balancer service to expose the database on required ports. In this example, ports 22 for SSH and ports 3306 for MySQL. These will be created by network service on demand. Now I come to configure my VM. I can pass guest customization to bootstrap the VM either through CloudInit or SysPrep if I would be deploying Windows. I can use guided inputs directly in the UI to create my config, or I can provide raw configuration in form of a cloud config file. This will fully configure my virtual machine during its first boot, create the user, install MySQL, and fully configure the database and create necessary tables. Next, I can change network configuration, including the networks that I can now fully self-service thanks to our integration with VPC. Now that I'm finished with my configuration, I can review it. And also notice on the right-hand side, resource manifests for all requested resources have been automatically created for me. I can now download them if I would like to reuse them later. My database VM will now be deployed, powered on, and configured. In order to connect to my database securely, I'm going to store the database name, user, and password in a secret and secret store. I can do this in the user interface, or I can use our new VCF CLI to create and manage secrets. Now I can move on to deploying a Kubernetes cluster. Deploying Kubernetes clusters with VKS is extremely simple. If I wanted a quick cluster, I could choose the default option, which would deploy a minimal cluster with latest available version in just two clicks. But for the purposes of this demo, I will choose custom configuration. I'm going to give my cluster a name and select the version I wish to deploy. 
VKS deploys fully conformant Kubernetes clusters and is fully aligned with upstream Kubernetes. vSphere Kubernetes releases are automatically distributed using a subscribed content library and can be unlocked by updating the service, which has an independent lifecycle from the rest of the platform. This allows us to stay aligned with the rapidly changing world of Kubernetes. I can add configuration details in the UI, such as labels, create volumes, or configure certificate rotation. Next, I configure the control plane, choosing the number of replicas, VM class, and operating system. For control plane, we distribute Photon OS and Ubuntu. Next, I configure my worker node pool, selecting the number of replicas, sizing, and operating systems. For workers, I can choose from Photon or Ubuntu, or I can create my own Windows-based images if I had any Windows container. I could also create labels or taints, or create additional persistent volumes directly in this flow. I could also go ahead and create additional node pools, for example, with different sizing or operating systems. The full cluster manifest has again been automatically created for me and is available for download. If I would wish to reuse it later or add any advanced configuration options available in cluster API. After a few minutes, my cluster will be deployed and configured. I can download kubeconfig directly from the UI or use our VCF CLI to create a context for the cluster, allowing me to switch between various working locations. Once I'm logged into the cluster, I can use standard kubectl commands. Now I can move on to deploying the backend API, which will serve the connection to the database. In the configuration, I'm injecting connection details from Secret Store. I will now go ahead and deploy this. To verify the connection details were injected correctly, we're going to connect to the container. And look at the mount location. Now all we have to do is to deploy the front end to get the web interface and a load balancer service to get an external IP. Once we have the external IP, we can use it to connect to the application. Here I can create a user that will be written into the database. I can then use it to log in and write an entry, which again will be written into the database. This will validate that our application is working as designed. We've now used multiple cloud services to deploy components of the application in the user interface and CLI. All of these resources have been natively defined as code, and we have downloaded all of the manifests. This naturally leads us to easily unlocking GitOps. We will upload the manifest to a Git repo and introduce Argo CD service, which will take care of the continuous delivery of the desired state of our application. Here we have a sample Git repository for the Argo CD application, including a parent folder with the application itself and subfolders containing YAML manifests we have previously downloaded, for example, this cluster manifest. I will now go ahead and create the Argo CD app using the prepared manifest. 
and I will wait for the desired state to sync. Once this is fully synced, we can see all of the components and their relationships as they have been deployed. And I can also grab the external IP of the front and load balancer service to verify we can access our application. In this demo, we have showcased how VMware Cloud Foundation offers a set of cloud services for runtimes, infrastructure, and advanced capabilities, all managed using a single declarative API and providing a consistent consumer experience while maintaining the governance and policies configured by the admins.